Okay, so I want to welcome everyone to our uh, second candidate forum. And uh, we are now in the house and early voting started at seven this morning. So everyone needs to go vote, um, seven to seven, <clears throat> excuse me, right? So um, today we're gonna do something a little bit different. Since we're in a runoff, I want this to be about you guys and I want you to have an opportunity to say what you wanna say. So they have already drawn 10 cards each. And so they will draw a card to see who gets to answer or go first. So what I want to do is we'll go ahead and draw a card and whoever has high card gets to pick the topic and then we'll have a discussion on that. And then the one who did not get high card will actually then pick the next topic. Okay, so let's go ahead and pick a card. Oh, look at you. Whatever. Hey, son. There you go. Very good. Well, so I get to pick a topic? Yes, yes. you do. Uh, first topic I want to pick is introductions, just to make sure people okay. know who we are, and then we can get into a real one. I'm Scott Bowman. We're from Mansfield City Council, place two. Uh, currently serve on the Parks Board. I've been there for a couple of years. Got appointed there back in 2018. Um, I love serving my city in that way. I uh, originally moved to Mansfield back in 2001 with my six-week-old baby. We wanted to find a place to call home, and Mansfield was quickly... Uh, a place to, that we identified as, as where we wanted to be. I have five children now. Uh, we range, uh, my kids range from six, seven now, it's been going on a long time, from seven years old to 19 years old. And uh, we've decided this is where our roots are planted. We want to uh, have this be the place where all of our kids come back and where the grandkids come. Uh, I mentioned I served on the park board, also serve as a Meals on Wheel driver, uh, and also work in various capacities at my church. Um, I love Mansfield for a lot of reasons, and one is uh, the linear trail that we have here. I love serving on the park board and uh, making progress on that project. Uh, every Saturday, you can find me and my, my fourth kiddo, my, my son, my youngest son, out riding bikes on the linear trail. Um, so not only are we you know, shaping the future of our park system, we're actually using it. Uh, I'm an IT professional, been in IT for 30 years, and um, think it's a great uh, career to be in, it's helped shape who I am uh, as an analytical thinker. I look at data uh, to make decisions. I don't just uh, just go off of my heart, which is involved also, but I use data to make those uh, important decisions. And um, it's also taught me how to think outside the box, to find solutions to problems that we have that are, you know, maybe not, not an orthodox or atypical solution. So, yeah. Well, I'm Tamara Bounds, and I'm also running for Mansfield City Council Place 2, the, the runoff. Um, I planted my roots here in Mansfield probably close to about 33 years ago. Uh, all of my children went through MISD um, and started when we only had the one uh, high school. I was a PTA mom then, and we were all into sports, and so we played baseball, so I was a baseball mom. As a matter of fact, um, my youngest boy was drafted by Chicago White Sox and went and played pro ball for a while. Um, I've been married um, for almost 40 years. In February, it'll be 40 years. I have 11 grandkids. I've been active in the community for uh, probably close to a decade, just um, being out there to advocate for everything from fixing my streets to looking at ordinances. I got my start as an HOA president almost 10 years ago with um, Nancy Neal being built and needing a new road out there. And that's when I first met the council. Uh, and then after that, it was um, being a voice for um, things that we needed done around the city that impacted my neighborhood. Uh, I sat on planning and zoning um, for a while. I also sat on uh, codes, uh, the board of uh, adjustment and codes uh, for about a year with that. Um, I also worked in several work sessions. Well, I worked on a work session in 2014, 2015 uh, for some new ordinances for the gas wells. I uh, worked in a work session uh, probably about four years ago, we began looking at the development close to my house. And so we started working on that with uh, making sure that we were getting the right uh, neighborhood in that would complement our neighborhood. 
And then over the years, I've become involved in as a taxpayer myself, um, wanting to go before city council and understand some things that were important to me as a citizen, which was the budget. So uh, several years ago, I did a PowerPoint and went and presented it to the city council during their work session, um, telling them my thoughts on where we might be able to make some uh, extra movement in dollars to be able to afford a tax break. And then also I was uh, participated in the work session this time around. I've been in healthcare for, oh, probably about 28 years. Um, I am a therapist, physical therapist by my licensure, um, but I've been a director of regional operations and a director of statewide operations for probably about 17 years. So a lot of my experience comes with being able to sit down and collaborate with people and work on opportunities that we have to make um, um, day-to-day operations better. And some of that also includes having the analytic data to back that up and look at industry-wide and what other industries are doing. A lot of HR, a lot of training, a lot of wearing of different hats. So used to putting on a clinician hat, taking that off and being an operator, taking that off and, and being a counselor, taking that off. So I'm really comfortable wearing a lot of different hats and comfortable with sitting down and talking to people about my point of view on some things, listening to what their point of view is and and working to to come up with a good agreement on what our plan should be and no matter what it is. And with my experience coming and working before uh, on PNC, I learned a lot about the ordinances, but I learned a lot over the years coming before city council and working with each one of the members there and bringing data to them that they could read and understand and make better decisions on. So I wanna carry that on to the council and be a voice for that. Okay. So you mentioned, you know, do a pop, you do a, uh, an actual topic or are we drawing? Well, I was gonna let her, since okay. she, since uh, we did the okay. first one, so then she gets the second one. So you get to pick the second topic and then we'll draw again. Okay. Oh, so two topics for each one. Yeah. Um, so one of my topics that I'd like to talk about is um, some of the things that I would like to see with MEDC. Um, I've done some research on um, our Mansfield Economic Department Commission. And um, I think that while they've done some good deeds and have looked at ways to uh, bring business here, I think that we need to change our focus a little bit on that. And we need to look at what better jobs we can bring here. I actually went and did an interview um, with um, Richard because I had several questions that I had that I wanted to know about um, our business retention here, what we did to do better for bringing more business here. And, And something thinking out of the box other than Uh, What we do as far as I know they do an annual, um, I think it's a golf uh, tournament that they do an annual one and they also look at where they can do training. And so we talked a lot about uh, doing a um, study, doing a, a survey for the surrounding cities and what the surrounding cities uh, are bringing and what how we can be more competitive with the surrounding cities and maybe have that good anchor here and and maybe look at what jobs that we can bring here that would enable people to contribute to our local economy and be able to live here as well. And some of that would be some of the tech jobs, some office jobs and space here um, uh, that we can look at bringing here, but also do we have the labor force in this area for that and what that looks like? So we discussed uh, in depth about what they do as far as getting out and recruiting. Um, they do go to several conferences and um, they, they do look at what the retail may be bringing in this area. But uh, we brainstormed uh, more of a challenge to look at what our workforce is here in this area and what we can do to bring tenants here 
that, you know, want to be here and, and know that they would bring some better paying jobs here. Um, we do have a lot of industrial and manufacturing jobs and those pay, I'm thinking somewhere, I think he said about 40,000 to $70,000 jobs, but we really need to look at a little bit higher paying jobs for that. And so um, I challenged um, uh, Richard to look a little bit more at that and be a little bit more proactive, do a comparative study regarding cities around us um, and what we can look at as far as bringing uh, higher salaries here that people can purchase homes without having that to be an incentive. They're able to be able to purchase homes here and they're able to shop here and live here and stay here. Um, and um, while our business retention is good, that we need to look at other ways for business retention and just not the same thing like providing welding schools and providing the golf tournaments. We need to look at spending those dollars a little bit more wisely as far as uh, recruiting different type businesses here. And then once they get here, what those needs would be. So um, I, I really think that we need to sit down as a council and talk more with MEDC about the goals for Mansfield. I mean, we're 73% built out and we've got just a little bit of land left. And so whatever it is that we bring here, we need to make sure it's sustainable and will serve our community and our local economy. Yes, but I agree. Um, I also met with Richard, met as the director of MEDC. I met with him multiple, multiple times since this campaign has been going on a little bit longer than we all expected. Um, we brainstormed as well. Uh, the focus I would like to see is to find that class A office space to bring in those higher paying jobs, very similar to what Tamara was talking about. To be able to have people that can live in Mansfield and also work in Mansfield. To diversify away from just the manufacturing, not exclude or uh, remove, but in addition to look at different sectors and different uh, different price points, different places where people can come in and have higher paying jobs, higher uh, tech jobs, uh, and allow us to build office spaces that um, will be a beautiful addition to our community. Create some urban cores where we have some office space alongside with retail, um, where we're able to uh, create mixed use environments rather than just have an office building and office building and office building. Um, the, the piece that I gathered from, from Richard was, you know, we're looking for a, a sweet spot of once we get over uh, X number of people and then uh, different companies will start looking towards us as, as a viable place for their, for their company to be. And we're almost there. You know, I believe Richard threw out a hundred thousand uh, was the, the point that he was looking at. And, um, as we build more residents, more of those opportunities become available. But until that time comes, we need to be looking at different approach to uh, recruit those businesses. And I feel like with the changing of city manager and some of the you know the mayor positions changing out, we've got a lot of leadership change, a lot of transition, uh, where things may not be done as they were in, in the past. <clears throat> and so simply through you know changing of leadership, we're gonna have a lot of, of focus change. Uh, and then also those data points, again, back to the, the IT background, those data points of hitting those thresholds where uh, companies start looking to cities as a home, uh, that puts us in a really, really good spot. Okay, Thank you, All right, another topic. Um, I'd like to visit, uh, talk a little bit about the parks. Um, I know that there has been a lot of, um, there was a town hall meeting with that and I attended that and was able to talk, discuss some things that they were, they felt like um, we were behind on. And so we had some discussions about what that possibly would be. And a couple of things that I guess with um, everything that they came out with on this budget was, I mean, I have to preference it with it was great and it was awesome, but I was disappointed that there were some things left on the table. 
And some of the things that were left on the table that I felt that were really, really important was in 2009, uh, there were some recommendations that were made. And the re recommendations that were made were to be able to increase the land conveyance and to be able to increase the dollar amount per dwelling units, as well as pay in lieu. And this stems back <clears throat> several years when we were talking about my neck of the woods and looking at building a park in my neck of the woods, because I live in that quadrant up there that doesn't have any park space up there. And so we discussed some things as far as, you know, new development coming out and what that would look like. However, when I started doing some research, I was asking the questions, how come we didn't ever go back and we didn't visit some of the things that we had talked about earlier in the 2009 one, and that was um, how much many dollars more that we would be looking at. And I, I'm sure you've seen this, uh, but I was disappointed that it wasn't addressed again. It was never approved, but it was not addressed in this go around. Um, it was questioned that maybe some of what we're doing right now is outdated, but it wasn't really brought up or addressed like it had been uh, recently. So when I start looking at some of that and I start putting uh, the dollars down to it and start looking at what we're, we're talking about, we need more parkland. And where's the more parkland going to come from? <clears throat> we're talking about, you know, we need maintenance and maintenance on our parks and we need to build more parks. And where's those dollars going to come from? And I saw in there where we're talking about sponsorships and, and we're talking about grants and we're talking about partnerships and and, you know, our sales tax dollars. And, and that's all great. But when I get to looking back in the past and if I looked at what we currently do and what was proposed, if you look at that over these last 10 years, we've had the potential to have lost over $5 million just in um, the dwelling units. And if you're talking about $5 million that we could have had, that could have in itself helped build some parks or take care of what we needed. Also conveyance of land. Um, we had talked about one acre, um, per 100 dwelling units. And the proposal in 2009 was one acre. Well, if we had a followed through with the recommendations, we would have found ourselves with 70.38 more acres. And if we're looking for more acres of land, um, that would have been a good place back then to start. And then I keep coming back to the fact that we're 73% built out. And so we need to be looking at where we're going to find that pocket spaces and where we're going to find those uh, uh, land conservation areas. We tried to get, we're still fighting some things with our own uh, uh, development coming up there with seven trees that are uh, heritage trees. And we can't, we're having a hard time with support with that. Well, as a city, we should value those things. We should be looking at the cons uh, conservation of more than just Oliver Park. Oliver Park is awesome. And Rose Park is awesome. And Town Hall, uh, Park is awesome. But we should be looking at what areas that we have within our city and, and protecting those areas. When I look at payment in lieu, and of course that's all things considered because not everybody does payment in lieu. If I look at payment in lieu, we have lost, if we're talking about $500 per dwelling unit is what currently is. And we looked at what was proposed in 2009, which was like $1,500. We've lost $7,3800, which that's a lot of cash too for uh, payment. But I think one of my biggest things that I was disappointed in that we really could have made a difference in was adding the piece where commercial commercial development would have also conveyed land or be responsible for that as well. And if you you know think about some of that um, in in park development and that we're built out as much as we are non-residential, 
If we had have done that since 2009, which is $1,000, that and think about what we've built since then the shops at broad all of the downtown stuff think about all of that that we would have been able to collect funds on for that so so anyway that's important and i think getting on council leadership to look at that and really have buy-in to move in that direction Great. So, uh, Tamara speaks about 2009, which was well before I was on the Parks Board. Sure. Um, and talks about agreements and things that were done well before my involvement. Uh, one of the key things that got me involved in the parks was the, the ice rink. Um, to see how the ice rink was done, um, we all kind of remember what, what went down there. Uh, that's what spurred my interest in, in the Parks Board and why I wanted to give up my time is to see uh, why things are done the way they were. And so I came from a, uh, a fiscal responsibility view of, of why I came into the And you're right, I have questioned uh, impact fees, uh, dedication fees in lieu of since I've been on the board. And uh, we've, we've talked about it a little bit and we've got a, a plan in place. Uh, we're taking care of some priorities along the way. One of those things was our 10-year master plan, which was just passed. Uh, to make sure that we have all of those ducks in a row. Uh, we also had some ordinances that needed to be taken care of, uh, and impact fees are, are coming up soon. Uh, impact fees are not, um, they're not calculated in a, in a linear fashion. It's a very complicated uh, formula to get the value of impact fees and to take a number from 2009 and most accurate number. So I'd have to do the, the math to figure out how valid those numbers are. Uh, they sound a little high, uh, simply because the, the impact, as more development goes in, it's less of an of a impact. And so uh, I would have to go back and look to see how, how accurate those numbers are. The, uh, the park system, we're an award-winning park system. We uh, have a very small budget when it all comes down to it. We use half cent of the sales tax uh, to pay for what we have. Our master plan has created a lot of opportunity and a plan for us to move forward. Uh, to refer to it as a, a, what I gathered was a plan of what we're going to don't have any dollars out Um, so that we can decide what's important for us to move forward with. Um, now, look, if we decide we want to do a, a larger activity center, what we refer to in a you know, fun way as the Big Mac, um, we're looking at $40 million. Well, we have a budget, you know, sales tax brings in seven to $8 million a year for the our school. It's going to take us years to save up that money. So we're going to need to look at other funding sources like bonds. Uh, will be a great way. We can uh, send it to the voters and we can vote on something like the MAC. Changing the uh, the impact fees is another way that we're, we're looking at making sure that we have funding available for those future projects. Um, some of the things that were set as were based off of feedback and um, uh, input from our citizens. So while we may have left off or whatever, we gathered the feedback from the city. We went through an exhaustive process of multiple town hall meetings, uh, small uh, sessions with, with people. Some of them even focused towards sports or focused towards um, other you know, segments to where we can make sure that we're getting all of the feedback that we need. Um, we've also decided uh, and promised that this would be a, a living document. Every year we're going to go back and, and review it. Uh, the last one was done for the 2010 year, uh, the 10-year master plan. And um, it kind of got done and set on the shelf. We didn't go back and review it. Where the best way to, to execute a plan is to do a little work and make sure you're on task. Re Reevaluate and get where you are. Do a little more work and reevaluate where you are. Reset your priorities as you go. Uh, if 2020 has taught us anything, <clears throat> it's that we need to reset our priorities and, and make sure that we're, we're working on the right thing. So um, while we may have a priority set in our list right now, it may not be that same way in two years from now. Uh, and the, the Parks Department and the Parks Board have agreed that, that that's the way it's going to be. 
uh, I think it's really good to make sure that we're keeping up with the changing community and changing needs and uh, the voice of the people. Okay. <clears throat> We've got about 10 minutes left, and so I'm going to give you some options. You can do a draw and want to, because pro that's probably one topic. Or if you don't want to do that, you can take the last 10 minutes for each of you to make, you, make your own statement. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys to decide what you want to do. I'm going to let you decide because you had the topic more than me. <laughs> well, but I mean, make our own topic or say what we want to say. You can draw from the topic. Well, we're on the back side of the second one, so I, mean, I get yeah. to choose the topic, right? Mm -hmm. I would have to choose the topic. All right. <laughs> uh, nearly a year. Nearly a year. We, uh, I announced in January, tell me a couple of a couple of days, a week or so after I did. Uh, we're in the 11th month of this thing. Uh, and when you talk about hot topics, things have changed. You know, back in back in the spring, it was short-term rentals. You know, that was a big topic. Uh, as we got into budget season, that's all anybody want to talk about, you know? Um, I think one of the key things is to make sure as council members, we are in touch with our community. We need to be able to provide uh, avenues for people to give feedback, not only through the city means, but to us directly. I feel I'm connected with a lot of different groups uh, through the neighborhoods and through, uh, through the shops. And just, I go to the same places over and over again, people recognize me. Um, and I have a diverse uh, group of people that would love to tell me how they feel. And so um, one of those topics that people keep talking about, even after the budget's been done is property tax. Uh, property tax is always a hot topic, a um, little, little bit more in the fall time when it comes up to the budget, we're finding ways that we can continue the great work that our current council is doing, extending our homestead exemption to the, to the maximum 20% to allow the state, continue to reduce our tax rate. So not only are we benefiting our tax, uh, our property tax owners, but also our business. And I'm committed to, to working with the rest of council uh, to find those ways for us to cut some spending, to make sure that we're spending on the right uh, projects, to make sure that we're, that we're diversifying, uh, diversifying our the property owners are not strapped with all of the burden. And then working with the plans that are already in place by the city council to get that exemption up to the 20 percent Well, I certainly agree with all of that. And being out at the polls with the general election as well as the runoff, certainly been able to talk to many people, and some were like, okay. Um, and so uh, it has been good to actually listen to one-on-one uh, -on -one with some of what the people say, and property taxes is still the hot topic. Um, but also people look at what is impacting them in their activities of daily living. I sat and listened to someone talk and had major issues about their water bill and their sewer bill and how high that's gotten to be. And boy, I can identify with that because mine is like twice is what it used to be. And so we had long discussions about what could it be impacting that. Uh, people talk about, you know, wanting to be heard and wanting to feel like the leadership is listening to them and feel like they have the confidence that the leadership will be listening to them and not just what directly impacts the people that are on the council. And so um, I think that 2020 has certainly opened a lot of our eyes to things, especially with us being a year into this almost and some things that we as leaders, potential leaders, if elected onto the council, where we need to pick up and go with and scrutinize and scrub some of the other areas, look at our infrastructure big time, but really, really um, look at our land use. Our land use, we, we've discussed that with parks and buildings and all that. Look at our land use and look at what that means for us in the upcoming decade. What we lay down now will affect us like this parks and recreation did. It'll affect us on down the road. 
what people want to be able to come and live here for and be cool and be in a diverse community because people want to come and live here and people really want to come and build here. And we need to be very conscientious of that, not give away the farm on things when people are coming here and listen to our constituents and, and be of good leadership. So. All right, that concludes our last forum. All right. <laughs> you did it, you're done. All Everybody right. needs to go vote. And thank you very much.